as you know, we should always strive to make dua a part of our daily regime, a part of our daily practice. I'm really enjoying these um, du'as. Um, they're enlightening and they're nice to obviously discuss and have. Inspirational um, and learning so much. Absolutely. So again, today we have um, Brother um, Heather Jezani. Thank absolutely. you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it was good, good to see you. It was a pleasure, you know. It was thank a pleasure. I mean, I love these. I love. I, love, I honestly love these. Um, you know, these discussions about du'as and stuff like that because mm -hmm. no one actually looks at it yeah. in a normal day-to-day -day in deep, deep depth. I think it's and nice to have your input because obviously as a reciter we are blessed to hear you but to hear some you know knowledge from you and to have some background it's really I'm 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 not a scholar I'm a reciter yeah. but I'm I'm just giving the input that I feel um you know the, the, how I feel when I recite these yeah, yeah. yeah. and how how I think how I think it should you know I'm giving my opinion on how I think yeah. people should take their importance I'm sure that there's well. some that pe many people are getting benefit <coughs> and regardless of, of you being a scholar or not yeah, people exactly. are getting benefit from. Alhamdulillah it's your sure. gift it's your gift no it's a blessing it's a blessing yeah. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mean, yeah. we, we have we have the main adiyah yeah, exactly. like dua kumail dua tawassul yeah all these ones, which we do um, uh, regularly, and it's beautiful. But these ones, these are short yeah. ones, ha help, you know, um, it's, it's every little help. That's, yeah. that's what we, we need, yeah. everything, everything small thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be happy with us. And I'm sure our viewers yeah. are enjoying it as much as we are learning inshallah, and, inshallah, and inshallah, blessing. Inshallah. So today's du'a, um, which we will be talking about, um, it's one that is recited at sunrise, um, and there's a mention of it being in the book, of Al Arabi from Muhammad Al Mustaqin. Mustaqin. Um, and so, do you want to just give us a bit of a brief background? To so, you? with this one, um, uh, Ibn al Tawsal Mustahabat al Nafs from the book Al Rabbi, uh, there's a narration where the sun, when it reaches the peak of the mountains, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Prophet would cry and recite this special dua, which is, Oh Allah, the day has come while my oppression has sought refuge in your forgiveness. And my sins have sought refuge in your pardon. My fear have sought refuge in your security. And I've given everything to towards you. If I'm scared, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I've, I've given myself towards you. If I'm if I'm if I'm angry, oh Allah, then 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 I've I've given it towards you. So as we said earlier in, in a different in a different episode, we said that anger, whenever you get angry, there's narrations to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what it's 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 full down to. So whenever you get angry, Ya Allah. And then just soothe your pain, you know. So, you, so you can, you can, you can, you can better your akhlaq yeah. to other people, and you know, um, it just ask, it's just ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for the simplest things. Oh Allah, grant me well being. Oh Allah, grant me good health. Oh Allah, for your sake, give me patience. Are we asking? Are we really begging and imploring? What's the spirit of this one, this particular? Um, thing? Of course, we're begging. We're all begging from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but you know, begging and us ask, asking. The only difference between them is uh, if you really want something, you beg for it. If you know how desperate you are, you beg, right? You beg. So mm -hmm. we are begging because we are desperate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asking is, is uh, Allah, says, Allah says, ask me. You know, there's, there's different, there's di but there's different ways. Allah says, ask me and I'll give you. Okay? But if you're begging to someone, you're showing the importance of that someone of how bad you want it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now Imam Ali says, Ask me before you lose me. This is Zamir al-Mu'mineen. Ask me before you lose me. But when you go into, when, what, what he means there, he means of the knowledge side yeah. mm -hmm. of everything. So there's, there's a difference. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want it so badly, you're going to beg him for your mercy. On your knees. It's, <laughs> it's interesting in this... Um, Mm. I just wonder when the sun is rising and the daylight spreads, you know, the phenomenon t between night and day is just, you know, sometimes you can look at the, the you know, contrast, the stark contrast. Um, at this point, the redness of the sun and he's crying, tears are flowing and he's speaking to Allah, being the greatest of creation in his humility to Allah and begging him. Mm -hmm. And you think, you know, from his position where we can say he could have that arrogance, he could have that you know, security that I'm accepted, I'm the prophet. Um, and so we're talking about needs and wants. I, I don't know if that's, you know, the context of what the prophet is. He's begging for security, his protection, Allah's protection. And I think even when, you know, 
in our context, are we always looking at wanting from God or should we be looking at Allah to say you are worthy of being praised, not just for our needs, which obviously we yeah. never ending list that we have. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's just beautiful how, how he's actually in his position speaking to Allah. And if the, the prophet begs, who yeah. are we? Who are we? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, the, the prophet, um, when he says, uh, when, he, when, 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 uh, um, when he says, um, oh Allah, help us with the punishment of your grave. Do you think Rasulullah is going to receive any punishments? Yeah. But he's saying it for what reason? To show to us. To teach us. To teach us. Yeah, to teach yeah, us yeah. what? To teach us. To teach us. I am. I am a prophet. I am infallible. I've never co committed a sin, and I'm still scared of Adab al Qabr, of the punishment of the grave. So who are we? Mm. So how scared should we be? Normal human beings who sin every single day. Adab al Qabr is not something uh, something easy. Wahshat al Qabr when you're by yourself inside your Qabr in your grave, it's, it's probably going to be the worst thing you ever... The imams used to cry you, for us, didn't they? Exactly. They used to, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We, they used to, Imam Sajjad used to cry for his yeah. Shia. He used to cry for the people. As human because beings, we don't like being alone. No. Exactly. We're social beings. We don't like isolation. There's one way that you can make people... I mean, sometimes we like to our own space for a moment for reflection, but we don't want to be but how long left do you want alone. Exactly. We want to be abandoned. Exactly. We like to be around You people. like someone coming to ask you, oh, what's up? Absolutely. What's wrong? No, but at that I time, mean, you don't want to have is, that. Loneliness is a, you know, it's a bad thing. In exactly. this country, I was reading, there's a, um, a senior minister that's been appointed as the, I mean, it's inverted commas, loneliness minister, mm -hmm. to um, reduce the loneliness in the UK because people, you know, the way that society is going, you know, it's, it's just really loneliness horrendous. Loneliness can kill. Yeah. Yeah. Loneliness yeah. can kill. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of research which has uh, proved that loneliness is, is what leads to many, many, many illnesses. Depression, anxiety. All these things, and anxiety is one of the top killers right now. Yeah. But do you think yeah. even when we talk about loneliness and you're saying that we have that time where we want to be alone and, you know, I think nature is something that gives you that sort of connection. And, and even when you're alone, but, you know, in our du'as, we're taught that you're never alone. Allah is always with Very us. Very good point, of course. Um, yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that when we have the time, for instance, at Fajr, when it's all quiet and peaceful, to have that time in, in loneliness with Allah, mm -hmm. that's a mercy and blessing. But I think of in course. the other times mm -hmm. when... The daytime when obviously life is getting hectic and we don't want to be alone in those moments where... No, no, no. no Allah's beauty opens your heart. Yeah. So when he says that the peak of the, of, of, of the, when the sun hits the peak of the mountain, where, I ask you, when is the most beautiful part of the day? It's Fajr. When you, when you, when, I leave quite early for work. So when I open the door and I see the sun just coming up, the redness of the skies, I love that. Mm. I love that. Like, I, 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 proper, like me, I'm the type of person who likes going... Uh, to like really nice views, like mountains, hills, or something like that. Just to look at a view and yeah, just yeah, yeah. just sit down and you know think yeah. over. If you have like a equation at work that you want to solve, you know you literally go up there and just reflect your mind. Even if if you if you have if you're stressed, you go up there. If you Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Ya Allah, it's just me and you. Yeah. Because there's no one around you. Do you get the answer. Hopefully, I hope I did. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, so uh, he's, he's, when he t when he tells you when the redness of the mm. of the skies, because that's the most beautiful part. Yeah, very of the day. spiritual part yeah. of the day. There's different windows of the day that spiritual. And, like and not anyone, has his own, yeah. uh, his own not beauty, anyone is, a, is, is, is is blessed to wake up and and I mean, there's a lot of people who wake up after Fajr, or people who sleep, literally go pray Fajr and, and sleep. There's no, they don't witness when they don't come outside. Yeah. they don't witness this beauty that Allah has given us. Because it's a change of, of, of whole environment. The sun is coming up. The light is beating the darkness. Mm -hmm. So imagine, imagine you live a life with no, with no sunlight. Allah has blessed you with this as well. This is all a blessing. So when, 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 when Rasulullah used to see it and cry, it means, it means how should we take this on board? We're not taking this very right. seriously. It's, it's a special moment, but we, we might take it for granted because we see it all the time. It's one of the times if, you're, if it's unfortunate, you oversleep or there's some kind of calamity yeah. with your alarm, your phone battery dies, you know, yeah. and then you feel sad. You feel like you missed the window or, you know, something was going by and you missed it. And you can't, you can't never get yeah. that back. You can get because at back, that, you get at that back, time, the doors, the doors, the doors of Ejab uh, is all open. Yeah. At that specific time. And yeah. there's only a time limit until it closes. When you pray li later... You just get the good deed that you've of you're supposed it. to pray. But the door of Ijabat 
is open the energy only in that period where the sun is, you know, at this peakest. And that's it. Later on, when you're doing, it, you're just you're yeah. just you're just doing your wajib. And you know it because you feel that the blessing exactly. that time and the peak. Exactly, time. exactly. I mean, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when he when 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 he gives us these kind of blessings, when Nabi Muhammad cries for this, yeah. it means it means Nabi Muhammad, which which has seen the seven skies, heaven and hell, for him to come and cry over a, a, a sunset, it shows us that we are not thankful for what we have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us. Give us this patience. Give us this blessing. Make us, make us see what we have in our life. You know what, Sayyid? After hearing your remarks, I need, I need, we need, we need to, to hear this du'a, inshallah. <clears throat>
the, the amount of problems that exist in the community and where's the first port of call that most people end up knocking the door of an alim even if it's outside of his speciality people will come with even economic crisis with psychological problem yeah. with health problem with all kind of every answer they give they have to hold responsibility exactly exactly well it's been a pleasure again today pleasure um, thank, thank you, you so much time. and um, that's all we've got time for um, next up is sister Masuma Jaffa and she's going to be discussing the hijab is it more than a headscarf <laughs>